Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna have a look at different type of relays to see how they work, how we can test them. And uh, I have provided some wind diagrams as well to see the relay in actual circuit. So uh, when we see the relay in a wind diagram, uh, it's gonna make it easier to understand the relay application in a circuit. And it makes it easier to understand how relay works and how we can test them. All right, let's uh, start by a quick uh, explanation about relay operations. As you guys know, relay is actually an electromagnet switch. So it means, for example, if you think about the starting system, if you just pass the high current that we need for operating the starter motor from the main control circuit, it's gonna damage many components. So instead of just providing the high current from the main control circuit, which is the ignition switch, cylinder, inhibitor switch, and a couple of other components. We actually use a low current to operate and to activate the relay itself. And then when relay is energized, it's gonna provide the high current to the starter motor. And uh, it's the same for all other components. We actually use a low current to energize the relay, and relay is gonna contact the main circuit for operating that load so inside the relay we have a winding or a coil which is this one which is a long piece of wire if we provide the positive and negative to this part this winding is going to get magnetized and it will generate the magnetic field so this is actually the main control circuit by magnetizing the winding we are actually going to close the main switch so there is actually one switch inside the relay which is this one as you see with this one that I'm actually pushing right now by this prop is going to move by the electromagnetic force which is generated by the winding. So on this relay, as you see, I have four terminals. Two terminals are connected actually to the winding and two terminals are connected to the switch. If we quickly have a look at the wind diagram, here we can see the relay in actual circuit. So this is actually the winding that I was talking about. As you see, two pins are connected to the winding. One should be positive, one should be negative to energize the relay. And here is the switch that I was showing earlier. This one is connected to the positive from the top and it's past the positive after this contact to the main component, which is a start solenoid. So as you see on the control circuit, we have just a 10 amp fuse but on the main circuit we have 40 amp fuse so this is actually the high current circuit which is going to activate the starter motor itself but how can we test a relay so for testing a relay we need to find out these terminals first so as you see there are some numbers over here 85 which is this one and 86 these two are actually connected to the winding and here i have 30 and 87 30 and 87 are connected to the switch side of the relay so it means if i provide the positive and negative to 85 86 the relay is going to get magnetized to connect the 30 to 87 so 30 is connected generally to the source of voltage and 87 is connected to the load so by knowing this i can activate the relay right now to see if it actually gets magnetized so for activating the relay you can use a battery or just one small battery like this, which is a nine volt battery, which is quite safe. So the switch is already off. I'm gonna connect the positive and negative to, to the relay, just like this. Okay. So, and if you look at the switch, I'm holding it just like this, so you can see the switch. Uh, when I turn this one on, you will see the switch. Okay, did you see it? Switch is already closed and now open uh, so this action is happening due to the magnetic field generated by the winding once again and that's it so right now the switch inside this relay is normally open it means if i check the continuity between these two terminals right now that relay is not working i shouldn't have any continuity but right after providing the positive and negative here when relay is magnetized we should have the continuity here this is actually how we can test the relay so I'm gonna grab the multimeter. I put the multimeter on resistance and continuity. So 
so I'm just trying to hold it like this right now as you see there is no continuity but when I turn the switch on as you see continuity is provided and we should have a resistance less than 1 ohm so this shows that the switch side and the winding side of the relay is working properly so if you do this and relay and you don't get continuity over here it means the switch side of the relay is faulty and you have to replace the relay itself you can check the internal resistance of this winding as well between these two pins 85 86 normally the resistance is something close to 100 ohms something a little less than 100 or a little over 100 so if I check the resistance right now in this relay so as you see we are getting 84 which is exactly within the range it means the resistance inside this one is okay so if the winding is broken uh, you may get no reading if it is shorted you will get something really really low so sometimes these numbers on the relays are different like what we have here on the wind diagrams so as you see in this case we have numbers like one and two for the switch side three and five for the winding side so you got to be careful about those numbers and sometimes on a relay itself we have a diagram so you can use that diagram for the uh, diagnostic to understand what are those pins so this is another four pin relay as you see we have the numbers 85 86 are here and this is 87 and this is a 30 so it means if I provide the positive and negative here I should have the continuity between these two so right now let's up let's energize the relay I'm gonna leave the switch on I'll show you how clicking sound in a relay can be sign of a relay which is magnetized the switch is on and when I connect the other one you hear it this is actually the clicking sound it means that relay is getting magnetized okay so I leave this one on and now let's go for checking the continuity between pin number 30 and 87 as I explained earlier so this is number 30 and 87 this means this means relay is working just fine and if I check the resistance between pin number 85 86 again I'm getting 89 which is exactly within the range and shows that the relay is just fine so we do have some other relays like a five pin relays this one has one extra terminal and as you see here it's actually this is 87 so right now I have 85 86 here these two are 85 86 this is number 30 and here I have 287 so this 287 means that these two are actually connected to each other which is normally used on engine control relay so this is the engine control relay I have the winding over here and this is the switch side so 30 comes to the relay and as you see on the output uh, if relay is magnetized this switch will be connected to this way so it means the positive can travel from here into this pin and at the same time do this pin so these two terminals are connected to each other that's why I have 287 so it means right now that this relay is not energized if I check the continuity between these two 87s which are right here I should have the continuity as you see the continuity is provided it means these two switches are connected to each other but there is no connection right now of course between number 30 and any of those 87 okay let's check the resistance between 85 86 as I showed you earlier just to see how much we are getting over here 95 94 exactly within the range again less than 100 ohm if I activate this relay by providing the positive and negative to 85 86 just like this so right now I have energized the relay it means this switch is connected to here so it means I should have the continuity between number 30 and each one of these two 87 so this pin is uh, 30 the first 87 the second 87 as you see they are connected to each other just like this so this shows that relay is working properly uh, there is another 5 pin relay this one has two output this is engine control relay 
again. So what we do, let's see if I energize the relay right now, what's going to happen. So in this case, these two are actually 85, 86, and this one is 30. If I put the probe over here, you see there is no continuity, but the switch is on, but there is no continuity. And if I show you something, if I take this one out, as you see, there is no clicking sound. It means the winding side of this relay is broken. It doesn't generate the magnetic field. So that's why uh, there was no connection between the switch side of the relay as well. So this is actually one example of a faulty relay. Another example of having a five terminal relay, which is normally used on some other systems like wiper system. So you see this diagram from the wiper system. This is the relay itself. As you see on the winding, we have two terminals, but on the switch, we have three terminals. So it means on this relay, we have a normally open and a normally closed switch. So normally open is that 87 output that I explained earlier, but normally closed, which is exactly what you see here, this normally closed is called 87A. So uh, this one is actually connected when relay is not energized. So it means when we say normally closed, it means when relay is not energized, this normally closed switch is connected. When switch is energized, this normally open switch will be energized. The switch is going to get over here. So, so this is basically what we have in the wiper. For example, when you when wiper is operating, when you turn the wiper switch off, that 87A is responsible to provide the power for the wiper to move all the way to reach to the uh, bottom position. So it's like this. If if this is the relay. So here I have the winding side, which is 85, 86. So I have this one is 30, which is coming from the power supply. So I have two outputs. Okay. And this is the switch itself. So right now, this relay is not energized. So this is the normally closed switch, which is connected to 87A. Right now, there is a connection between pin number 30 and 87. It means if this one is connected to a fuse, all right, power from this fuse is going to travel all the way from this normally closed switch through that 87A and to the load. But when relay is energized, if you provide the positive and negative here, and this relay is energized, this switch is going to get attracted this way and we will have the switch just located just right here. In this case, the power is going to travel from this side to 87 and to the load. So this is basically how a five pin relay in this case works. So it means on this relay, if I want to check this relay, first of all, if I check the pins, this is number 30, 87A and 87. So 87A is a normally closed switch so it means right now that relay is not energized if I check the uh, continuity between 30 which is this one uh, and 87a I do have the continuity this is the normally closed switch but what happens if I provide the electricity so switch is on I provided the electricity right now if I check the continuity again between 30, there is no continuity anymore. So I turn the switch off again. Continuity is provided. This is the normally closed because switch is not activated right now. You see it's off. If I turn the switch on, there is no continuity anymore. But the continuity is on the 87. Right now, the normally open switch is closed and I do have the continuity over there. So this means that the this means that this relay is working just fine and it's switching between normally closed and normally open switch. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. There are many other diagnostic videos on the channel, so please don't forget to visit the channel page and subscribe for getting the notification when we upload new videos.